I am going to make my colour a bit stronger. And you could just dot it in. And a bit of a shadow there. A bit there. So I'm going to start to be a bit freer with it in a minute. So if you hold it upright, and I'm, I'm using resting my finger, then if you can see, whenever I'm drawing a shape, and what I want to try and suggest, I always rest my finger on the board, and I hold my pencil, and I, I'm doing this or holding my brush, and it keeps my hand steady, and that's how I can sort of get the shape that I'm after. Pull this towards me. There we go. So you can see how you can. So, so I'm not attempting to draw and copy an exact cow parsley. I am just suggesting them. Not me, so far. So, but the reason why I've put these on first, normally this is something that we'd be probably doing carefully, perhaps, and we would be um, using masking for it. But for this exercise, if we draw these first, then this is going to help us um, know where all the shapes are if we do it all first. Okay, and then we're going to start to go a bit mad with lots of colours and lots of shapes afterwards. So, just as before, at the moment I've got these green, we can, we could, uh, we can even do some completely abstract colours you want. Um, I think we might do some nice blues and purples, perhaps. And we can just, if you want to, just throw the idea of having it realistic out the window if you want to. What I'm going to start doing now is getting some blue. I'm going to start doing the extra colours here. Do you remember how last time we were saying how we were going to, we could start to make quite, how would we do? We were pressing with our brush to suggest the shapes of lavender. We can use this technique just by pressing. So, so some of these, for the cow parsley, some of these could be in white silhouette. So this is where we would eventually, so if I just mark this out with pencil, then you can see what I'm getting at. So if I get this one here, and last week, we were doing what we were doing. We were doing lots of little shapes, or lots of little wiggles. So I'm just doing it random squiggles back, okay? So for this exercise, it doesn't really, we could have the pencil marks shown if you wanted to, or if I had not. So what I'm going to do is some of these cow parsley we could have as white flowers, but now the cow parsley is going over, we can have some as seed heads. So I'm just doing wiggles. Okay. So this, these are all the shapes that we were doing together last week, just to get this the way you wanted it, if you remember. Okay. Just a HB pencil, because if afterwards when we do it, when we're going to put some salt crystals on top, afterwards if you want to, we can put these out, okay? It's meant to be very free, as you can see, and very sketchy. Because I know that some of you get wrapped up in type detail. So for this exercise, we're trying our hardest to be more free and making a suggestion of what we can see, rather than it being super duper detail. Okay. So that's what I've done at the moment. It's looking a bit bleached out. So the other things that we could be doing, it, we could be getting at, so the next step that we're going to be doing now is we're going to start to introduce, once you're happy with your suggestions of cow party, we can obviously spend ages doing this, but once you're happy with you think we've got a suggestion of the feel of a little arrangement we're going to start to introduce and get a bit wild with splashes and shapes and things okay so we're going to change up or i'm going to change up for a very big brush i'm going to start to mix up some things of color i'm going to have some soft golden color at the top very pale 
very soft and then we can introduce perhaps introduce some purples and so I've got a I've got a big brush like you'll find it easier much easier to, to start doing washes so I'm just scooping up a nice golden colour and I'm not going to go too strong so we want to be able to perhaps suggest a nice sunlight coming from above but we don't want the colours to be in your face so hopefully so I'm going to start to wet this now and I'll put it down let's see if you can start to see this I don't know what we can start to do is I am going to start to stop in front of this. I've got um, I've got a very very pale wash on. It's it's yellow colour that I've got on. So it's very, very sheer, very, very light, and I'm starting to do that now. Yes, and I'm wetting this again. You don't have to pre-wet it, but it's very, very pale at the moment. Okay. Okay. And this is how we can start to get soft, muted colours going. And let's, let's just go. Well, I might have to go a lot darker with my work because I don't think you can see it very well. It's a cobalt blue that I'm starting to introduce in, yeah. Mm. So what we can start to do is start to work into it. So what I suggest you do is we're going to wet the background. We're starting to introduce some colours. At the moment I haven't bothered with the salt yet because the washes are very light. And for the table salt to work, we're going to need to get the background to gradually go darker. But while it's wet, if you're starting to streak on colours, you can get some really nice effects. And you, if you wanted to, you could start to, as I say, because I'm starting to flick these shapes on, or you can start to do little splashes, you can start to suggest the undergrowth and the way things are working. The more you start to splatter on, the better it gets, I suppose you could say. So I'm going to try and get a strong, I'm going to try and get a really strong colour for you. So I'm picking up some cobalt turboil, it was light and some wings of blue green shade and I'm going to start to go really bright with these colours and it can hope, in the hope that you can uh, start to see what I'm doing. At the bottom, I'm picking up some purple, so it's it's looking almost indigo and very dark blue in an attempt to get some of this texture going on. And soon, I'm going to be able, be ready to start to put some salt on. At the moment, this area here, where I've done the pencil mark, where I wanted to keep the silhouette for the um, uh, flowers is still dry so this is a dry patch here and a dry patch around here and I haven't worried about this blob you know 
I haven't at the moment blogged it yet, but you could you could look yourself on that if you decide you don't like it. Okay, more work. I've got some really nice running coming down here. I know that that's working. And you could just tip the tip it up. So as you can see, today's the name the aim of today's game is to uh, have everything loose, wishy washy and a bit abstract I suppose or suggestive and I'm just going over the top when I'm starting to lose the texture and thing I can start to go over the top and that, this is all wet here I'm sure I've got lots of spots all over me as well but it's a really nice effect you're all going to be cursing me next week now <laughs> the fact you've got all these splashes everywhere. Right, let's get rid of this corner. So if I just break this up. So I'm just really doing some strokes coming up and randomness. I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not trying to keep it careful, am I? I'm throwing being careful out of the window. So it's all a bit random and a bit scary. Not the name. But the main thing is we're just whacking on loads of colours. So let's have a bit of pink around here. Don't know what it is. Okay. We could suggest it's something. Look, let's let's bring it straight down here. There we go. It's quite pretty, so we'll just let that stay. And we can bring it strong down here. A few wiggles around here. And we're getting some nice depth of colour down the bottom. I'm sort of picking up some blues and purples. I want to get it almost looking black down the bottom. And then we can start, we're almost ready in this area to start thinking about. Um, Yeah, let's put some more on there. I'm almost completely gone over the cow party now. And I quite like this blueness, so I might Right, got a few blobs in around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to put the salt on. This is my table salt, and I've just gone like this over the top. So what we're aiming for, which is going to take hours to do, is we're aiming for this table salt to lift out lots of nice, it's going to resist and it's going to suck out lots of nice shapes for us. So that's why I'm scattering it on. Okay. I've done it predominantly up here where the cow bars are in. So, so what we can do now, so there's the salt here and along here. Now what I can start to do now is start to work into this to bring this shapes darker. Can you see we've got the shadow where I had my cow parsley? Okay. So I'm now going to emphasize this. I quite like the way it's gone dark at the base. So I'm, if I'm going to get my, get my brush. And I can drag. 
Oh yeah, there's another bit there. And I'm gonna put a few dabs. Wow. Yeah, and it it's um always looks better when the salt dries. If you have it have if you have the colour strong, then the it shows up better. Okay. So because your paper is wet. You can still start adding more colours to it, but every, all your lines that you do will be um, soft. So up here, can you see if I just do some little marks like this, this could be, I don't know, I'm sort of, I don't know, it looks a bit, it might, it's making me think of pink soul. In the middle, sort of thing. But because it, everything's all wet, it's all so if I'm just picking up my brush. And if you just press with it and then lift off, you've made a very faint suggestion of a flower. Because it's all wet, it's all very soft. Okay, so I'm going to do another one here. We try very hard not to have them all in a row. You really want, when you're doing flowers or suggesting undergrowth and things, you want to really try and have it. I always try really hard to have everything a bit. Higgledy biggledy. You don't want it to be too tidy. You know, otherwise you think, oh yes, one, two, three, and then you all suddenly you think you think careful you end up with, with them in rows. Okay, you want to make sure that it's random. So this colour here is um quinicridone magenta. And all I'm doing is getting my brush and I'm pressing it down and lifting it away, pressing it down and lifting it away. And it's it's making some flowers. Well, that's what I've decided what they are anyway. Okay. Then you, this is when you can start to use your imagination. I'm going to get up my watercolour pencil now, and it's dry. And I'm going to say, oh, well, if I can just scribble around there, pull that down, and scribble around there, and pull that down, and pull that down, like that. There we go. Yeah. Can you see that? So this is me sketching in with a dry watercolour pencil to suggest these little flowers. See that? Mm. Purple. It looks blue in this line. <laughs> I'm going to have to try. It's, it's a classic dioxine purple. It's meant to be, a, it's a creative mess. I haven't got any salt at the bottom. I've just got salt around here and salt around here. So the theory is, what will happen is, when the cow parsley eventually dries, it's going to bleach out and lift out the colour that, you, that you've got, the, the salt. So you, maybe you have to leave it on there for a few hours. Don't wipe it off now. Just put on as much as you can, because it needs to have a depth of colour in order for it to resist. Okay, well, when you've got your shapes, you can start to work back into them. So this is the next step. You can start to get your pencils that you've got, okay, and you can start to, to work into it. Mm. 
Okay, and you can start to get some quite nice little shapes going. See? So what I'm doing now is is re-sketching my initial rough and I'm just going over it with my watercolour pencil. Yeah, just trying to emphasize. Yeah. There you go. All right, you could use ordinary, um, right? It just, it just makes it faster to, yeah, it just makes it faster to start sketching um, information in. Okay, so my soul that was here is disappearing because obviously it's wet on wet, so you can start to bring it back in again. I mean, this is also an occasion where if you wanted to, you could use, you know, in the past where we've used, um, cling film or tissue paper to get scrunched up effects at the bottom so you could do that as well if you wanted to or if you decided that a particular area has gone too dark you can decide to lift up a highlight can't you so you can look just by me pulling like this can you see i've just so we can start to do that I'm going to put more turquoise at the top here because I really want this salt to show up. So I think it's a little bit too light up here. So I'm going to introduce, I've got my cobalt turquoise light. It's like a, you could use cerulean green or something like that. Cerulean blue even. Okay. And I might just think, right, I'm going to bring, just to bring, oh yeah, that looks quite pretty. Because I really want to make sure that when this dries, that the salt's going to resist and it's going to um, bring some interest in here. Oh, yeah, it's quite pretty. So, another way of doing things is to just drag. There's no particular reason why I'm dragging to the left or just just down. It doesn't. There's no wrong. It could be just straight up. I'm just going to soften some of this. So it's just to get some interest coming through. Okay. That's a bit better. And then what I might do is just plot that. There we go. Now I'm going to go back to my magenta and let's, let's bring some more shapes up here. I might actually go Slight, slightly different colour. I'm completely making up the colours. I've just, just decided the sorrels. I'm just suggesting a shape up here that's going to look a little bit like sorrel. So this one over here, because I've made this, this is Punicudo magenta, so it's a deep dark pink, and then I've done the stems purple. The cow parsley here is looking, the cow parsley here is looking cobalt blue. 
and then the stems are going down into a dark green and then the background at the top is looking practically white with a very hint of the palest of yellow in it and then up here I've got a nice actually can you see where it's dried I've got this little tide line okay so that's actually quite interest, interesting so I might actually try and create another one so rather than just have this one over here when normally we'd be saying oh no I don't want this shape let's um let's deliberately make another one so if I lift out that here like this I can start to do another one or if you don't decide actually I've got a white blob here I want to soften that away I'm just smudging look just having a good old scribble okay this is where I, I suppose it is where you you start using this as your starting point and then everything else is your imagination as to where you want some things to go you could we could start to suggest some things in the background because it's wet let's let's um let's just suggest something here okay and we've got lots of area around here that at the moment i is completely um empty so it's it's ready for me to do all sorts of things i can say well i want to lift something out and suggest there's another plant okay or i could start to work on with more different colors so over here we haven't really got much green so so if you've got a shape that you don't so down here well you can work on top of them you can break them up now this is beginning to dry i'm just tapping up to suggest that we've got um you know the grass is all pollen in the air and it's beginning to all blow in the breeze you know blow in the breeze so i'm just tapping so i'm just really trying to break it all up so it's you know we've, we're in that messy hedgerow so if you want to bring this well you can say you were talking about having too much yellow so why don't you break that up with some golden colors um if you've got think you've got too much yellow look i can bring some yellow in so that, that's suggesting that there's all sorts of things in the so if you've got too much yellow you could break it up by or soften it by you could look at perhaps some ochre colors to soften it down a little bit or because it's still damp if you added a muted color that will soften the yellow the main thing is to say we should just to keep keep the salt at the top okay and it's wet and it should start to resist it but it will take a while for it to work so the more you build up the better it's going to start to get Just have some fun, really. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to keep the salt there. I'm make sure it resists. Uh... So I suppose the more your picture starts to develop. Why can you say use your imagination just to, to see if you could think of thistles or think of grasses or you've got your um, clover think you know think of the meadows and just use your imagination really to come up with some shapes okay and then as I say the more you, know, the more you look the more you see 
So you can start to pick up a colour. Okay, or your toothbrush, whatever. And say, so, right, I'm going to start to flick on the colours in the way that I want them to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry and then I'll take a photograph of what I've done so far and I'll email it to you. But what I um, would do is, so if you find when you, once this is burned dry and you've brushed your sea salt off, if you find that it's not resisted enough or you haven't got um, enough highlight or you're not happy with it, I will show you how to create highlights and we could use white gouache or we could use pastels, some chalk pastels. So we can start to develop this into a mixed media picture if you so desire. Do you remember that I did a painting of dried poppy seed heads? I, didn't, I did it with the Swavesy group and I believe I showed it to you as a group, as an image. Do you, do you remember that? If not, I can send that as an attachment as well to you. All right. So this is this is the technique that I started to use. And when when one layer gets bone dry, if you then decide, you know what, it's not strong enough, or I want to try and bring out some more colours. Okay. As long as it's bone dry, you can work back into it again. It's when you start. I mean, I can actually put some more colours into this now. As long as you keep the colours bright, it's when you start over mixing colours and over pulling or on, on the on the surface. That's when you start to get muddy colours in the way that it's working. Okay, but be, because I've not done too much rubbing in, I've been just putting lots of colours over the top. At the moment, my colours aren't looking too muddy. Okay, so you could also, if you wanted to start when when you decide to put more layers on this is also the opportunity when we start looking into Anne Blockley's work where she's really putting in strong dark colors and using granulation medium and things like that so well, now that this is beginning to settle I want to really try and emphasize the depth and some really nice pretty colors down here so it's not dark enough so now that it's beginning to settle I'm just going to be introducing some more colors and um, I'm really thinking about making up simple forms to suggest um, flower forms and shape like that that could be thistles, could be down the lines, could be clover, could be you know anything that's that's made up in the way that in the way that you want it to work. Okay, so that's what I will be doing, and then in selective areas, that's when I will. So, so for example, there's a little mark there I've made with my brush. It's just a very slight little mark there. So if I got my pencil, okay, if I just, just by doing that and something like that, already in your head, that's your brain, hopefully, is saying to yourself, oh, that looks like a flower. I don't know what it is, but it's something that looks like a flower. Do you understand my thinking? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Equally, you could say, well, actually, I'm going to... Um, so any any shapes, flower forms, cup shape, if you wanted to, up here, we perhaps, if we did some lifting out, or with our, perhaps next week, for example, with our gouache pen, we could say, well, actually, I'm, I'm going to suggest some daisies, perhaps, okay? So if I start to lift out... I've now got some highlights here. You probably can't see them, unfortunately. So I'm breaking these out by pressing hard on the same spot and lifting off. I am pressing hard and lifting off. I'm lifting out. I don't think you can see that. I think it's too bleached. I'm suggesting a, a mistiness coming, a bit like, you know, when we did the clouds and we painted a blue sky and then we screwed up some tissue and then if you press hard and immediately lift off, you are left with an outline. So I have just pressed hard like this 
really hard and lifted off and it's left me a fuzzy outline shape so and I will draw that outline shape so that I can say to myself oh I've now got an outline shape that looks like this And I'm now pulling down some stems and I now have some more wiggly, so now another wiggly shape. And you see it's very bleached. It's very bleached this week, so I don't know why. You would think, considering I'm indoors, you would think that it wouldn't do anything like that. But anyway. So I've now got like a wiggly outline of a cloud, and I've got my lead pencil and just suggested a form that could be another bit of cow, cow parsley, and then just dragged a line down. So this is, and it's completely made up. Okay, so then you can start start to see some more shapes in so now that i've made up this shape that could be say cow parsley or some of the lovely pretty weed okay i can now say right i want to emphasize this outline here so i'm now going to paint around the top like that and i can fizzle that out can you see it's now showing up? Ugh. Okay. And I can say, right, I am now going to put a little shape underneath. There you go. Can you see? And it's completely made up and then we can draw a line up here and say oh well, there's something else going on up here and i've got another little wiggly bit there and then i think oh just to make it pretty i'm gonna add a speck of blue because because i can could be any color you like obviously okay. This color is um, just what color is it? Oh, it's it's Windsor Blue Green Shade. And it's looking quite dark, so I'm just going over some of the areas because I really want to make sure that it shows up strong. You can get all sorts of lovely textures. This is I'm just tapping with my brush and it's gone almost dry now. So it's given me a nice broken edge. So you can get some really nice pretty shapes going on. So what I will do is I'll take a photograph of this and I can develop it a little bit more. Um, if you could please let the salt get completely bone dry and your painting completely bone dry for at least 24 hours, okay? And then, by, then after that, brush the salt off. But leave it on for the moment for as long as possible because you want, it, normally when you um, 
do that then the um it resists and it makes a really pretty effect but it needs several hours to be able to do that otherwise you can't see anything 